Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Security in New York. I'm here with Z from White Source. White Source, right. So unpack White Source. I mean, it sounds like white something and then source, source exactly. code. Exactly. So we basically um, look at the open source code that is out there. As you can imagine, not everything is at the quality or the security that fit enterprises or companies that use open source. So we help them to whitelist or find the jewels out of the rough and find the ones that are secured, high quality, can be maintained, etc. So that's how the name came up. So if an enterprise builds a piece of software right. and they've taken different parts of open source projects and put them in, is that what you're helping them? We out? help them to pick the right pieces up front and you know if someone did mistake you know so we can apply policies and, and actually prevent some, from the good bad stuff to get into their account but then as you know code is thing that keep on changing so if suddenly there's a vulnerability you know there's a way for us to provide the alert you know think of Equifax is a good example right an open source vulnerability exploited no one knew or no one fixed it on time so this is exactly the things that we are doing and do you feed, when you, when you find these exploits or these holes or backdoors or whatever you're finding, do you feed that back to the open source project itself? So no, we actually consume the data that the community provide us. Okay, so the community uh, are the ones that suddenly find uh, you know, a new vulnerability in a, in, a, in a piece of software, right? So we make sure that this, is, this information is immediately accessible to the, all our clients that are using this specific one. So we do not create uh, we don't identify our own vulnerabilities. We just let them know which are the pieces that are currently vulnerable and may have been even a fix out there. So in a way, it's kind of like a clearinghouse? Uh, you, you, you pass through you, you know it's going to be good? Um, you know, obviously we do a little bit more, you know, because we allow the corporates to, to put a lot of policies on top, right? Uh, but you may say clearinghouse, you know, it's, it's a new definition, never heard of something like that, this term being used, but it could be one. Well, so like a whitelist, I mean, yeah, that, no, that's I, I hear, I understand where, what you're coming from. Where yeah. the name came from. So when you're working with enterprises and they've got a, a mix of open source and proprietary and all of that, are there common things that you're hearing from customers that they're having problems? Absolutely. So, um, you know, if you, look, if you go back two or three years, right, the only way for corporate uh, IT to find uh, you know, even the inventory of open source was by scanning the code. You know, go back to the stuff that is already written and distributed, check the code and find what's there. That's too late. And, and this approach was fitting, fitted when, when used, people used to enroll three, five, ten components. Today there are hundreds. Today Gartner says that 80% of the new code include open source, right? So, uh, you know, that's not enough. So, uh, so enterprise, the challenges for enterprise is to find a way to stop open source from getting in at the gate. They call it shift left, okay? As left as you can go in the, in the waterfall, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they really want to make sure that, you know, they, they identify that an open source piece will not leak in at the moment that the developer is, 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 is going out searching through his browser, etc. And this is, this is exactly what we pitch to them. <coughs> We're one of the few that actually allow the developers, while they are looking, surfing in the internet, directly from the browser, to pick something on the spot, see if it's good enough, if it's vulnerabilities, whether someone else is already using it in the corporate. So you provide that? All that information is provided at the point where the decision is made by the developers. And that's huge cost saving. Because if you can stop it there rather than here, right, right, right. and 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 this is the challenge that ninety percent of the uh, corporates are looking. So at. stop it up front, yes. and you don't have that whole development that you. And then, then have the to second piece that they really care about is identifying new vulnerabilities as they find, as they come up, and fix them quickly with the next f patch. Right, knowing what are the changes in the inventory that they already have, being able to react fast and shut it, you know, that's the next big thing for them. Because right now, um, in order to get to understand where the vulnerabilities are, they really have to go to multiple data resources. Not all of them are accurate, not all of them are reacting on time. Uh, we aggregate all that information for them, and once there is a new vulnerability, boom, we let them know. When there's a fix, we let them know. Well, so without giving away your secret sauce, how do you guys figure this out? 
Oh, it's, it's a great story. You know, the three of us, the three founders of the company, myself, uh, Azi, Ron Limon, who is the chairman, and Rami, who is the CEO, we were three partners in a previous company that was sold to CA Technologies, 2007. And on the last night before signing, we were still clearing open source components. They were just scanning our code, finding more stuff and more stuff, and, more, and sending that to us, asking us to clear that. And you know, we signed a deal, and we talked, the three of us talked and said, you know, we have to bring something different to the table. You know, that doesn't make sense. It took us a year or so to figure out what will be the right approach, and the rest is history. So are you a, a, a CA company? No, no. no? I, I'm CA, we, we, uh, the idea came from a previous company okay, that okay. both three of us initiated At, and sold to CA. Okay. At, and on the last day of, uh, of, the, of signing the acquisition documents, this is when the idea came up. And now the three of us are starting this new started this company. So what would the three of you like to see happen in 12 months from now? Let's, let's say, you know, because 12 months is quite a while. Right. I mean, three months is a long time in, in right. this industry. So in 12 months, where would you like to see White Source and what would you like to be doing differently? Um, right now we focus on growth. We triple our revenues, number of clients, you know, year over year. Um, you know, we raise money. Um, Microsoft is an investor in the company. What we do right now is make sure that we build the company to continue grow at that same rate. Um, you know, I was a little bit outside the company uh, for the first few years because I'm based in New York, the rest are in Israel. Now that the the, the business started to grow, I took the responsibility to run the America operation, so I'm the GM for North America. So our goal is to make sure that we'll continue growing at the rate of 3x year over year, uh, expand our, you know, make sure that our brand is all over. Um, you know, actually we get good reviews from, f um, you know, for some of the analysts like uh, uh, foresters, etc., that will put us quite in the top of this pack. So expanding, making sure that our brand is, is being known, that's our goal for the coming 12 months. And what do you see happening in the industry? Because so, if open source and software are eating the world, and if 80% of software is going to have open source in it, and, and software is eating the world, where do you see security in that, that relationship? It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be one of the prime selection criteria for open source. Uh, it's, it's, it, there's no question about it, you know. It, it's, it's, it's so expensive, you know, to get rid of end. something at yeah. the end, yeah, yeah. even in the middle, mm -hmm. right? So being able to identify the good stuff out of the rest and, and provide some guidelines, you know, about the quality of the developers, right? Do they release patches very quickly after uh, stuff like that comes in? The overall quality, that, that's going to be extremely important. Uh, today, clients still, uh, majority of the clients are still at the stage where open source is part of the maintenance process, right? But all of them are trying to move as, as, as far as they can. Requirements to the or specifications. Exactly, what yeah. we call shift left, right? Yeah. And, and, and that's a major trend right now. How to be able to identify the bad stuff at the gates before it comes in. Excellent, Azi, we look forward to that. Hey, thank you very much thank for you. your time.